How do you feel about Alex Bregman Day here in the city of Houston? How do you feel about it now? He just woke up. Okay. Alex Bregman was the superhero that we needed to destroy the evil power that is the Oakland A's. Okay. Oh, without Alex Bregman, do you think do you think that we would have had that one of the great wins in our history, in our Astros history? No. Not without Alex Bregman. Not without the two home runs and the double, four RBIs. Is it Bregman or three is it for Julia three. Morales? I didn't hear it. I saw she was in the booth. Todd Callis was on the field. Uh, yeah, I guess that's what he was doing. Yeah, because yeah, at one point he was behind. But, um, yeah, she made the calls. She she made home run calls like people are going crazy about. Oh, it. yeah? Yeah, we'll hear it. We'll hear it. Tell you got it. We're going to get it. We're going to get that to you in a little bit here on ESPN 97.5. Yeah, she did a good job. Um, so, so Alex Bregman now, all of a sudden... Gonna have to re-sign him for three hundred. He's gonna go. What Alex Bregman's trying to do is save his contract right now. Because before the game yesterday, all I could think about was, you know, there's a chance the Astros will get him for about twenty one million a year for three years, and and they'll get a discount on Alex Bregman. They still it's not might. a discount if you play bad. Now I'm glad he had a good game this year. Yeah, that's good. That's good. And that's one of the things you need to have now. Bagwell might be ready to sign him to 40 a year for five years uh, based on that year, uh, based on that game. Right. But I don't think Jim Crane is going to. Well, we'll see. But Bagwell I, may be ready to give ba- him 40. Why is Bagwell now the, the just, okay. Because he did stop the two, he, he did two bad deals. He, he, and, he, and they stopped operating and they, and they appear to have stopped operating at the way that they, they used to operate. When he came in and Jim Crane started saying things like we need to get baseball people in here with their eyes to see things instead of all these numbers guys. Hmm. I mean, it all coincides. That's why he gets it. Yeah. It just appears to be maybe it's a wild coincidence, but it all appears to be tied to when Jeff Bagwell really. Well, and we'll see if they can't turn this thing around and which they which they will. <laughs> what well, doesn't change the fact that Jeff Bagwell should have never had his hands on any of these moves? Uh, Yeah, that that. that. You and know. I'd much rather have a guy like James Click, frankly, doing stuff like that. I, whether it's him or somebody with his background or whatever. Yeah. For whatever I, reason, Jim Crane didn't want to, uh, to, uh, James Click around. And that, you know what? He did want more. He said it. He said we need more baseball people to make it, you know, in, in the decision-making and now process. now he says that it's him <laughs> and Jeff. And Jeff says it's me and Craig and Reggie Jackson. Right. And Dana. Yeah. I mean, that's why everyone thinks it's Jeff. Because Jeff says, hey, just yeah. to let you know I'm one of them. Yep, you're looking at him yeah. right here, pal. Um, and it was good to see. It was good to see Bregman get his confidence back. Look, this is this would not be the first time he was total dog turds in April and frankly in May. We've seen him come out of it in 2022. He didn't come out until the first half was almost over. It was an even longer run than this. A bad baseball for him in 2022. And 2022 is remembered fondly. For Alex Bregman, because he was good in the second half and he helped win a World Series. Yeah. But if you go look at it, he was not good for most of the first half. This actually is coming out of the slump even earlier. We're used to just saying April, but the fact is, early on, he's bad. Historically, annually, he's terrible early on. And this year was no difference. So if this is the beginning of him waking up, it's it's nothing new. Mm-hmm. This is what happens. But, man, was that a good one yesterday. Well, he was much better. I mean, the home run is... The- in 22, he was much better than he's been now. He had a 791 OPS in April. And Did a, he? Yeah, and over 700 in May. Are you kidding me? Over 700 is not great. Hey, f- he's been 500 no, this no, year. No, no, this is, this is awful. He was... We- you would have <clears throat> taken that 700 but this what did year. He, what did he hit in those months? He, what do you mean? He had go all the way into April, he May, June. He had two thirty three and two twenty two, two two twenty one in those t- first two months of of twenty two. I mean, not great. No, no. I mean, but obviously, no, but, more uh, home run. Well, he had like no home runs forever. Yeah, this uh, year. Yeah, no, this year. Yeah, how about how about it? He breaks out. He had four home runs. Are you kidding me? In April, he had four home runs, and then he added two more in May. Six home runs. In those two months, you'll take it. You'll take it right now. Yeah, that wasn't a no. lot. No, that's not a lot of home runs. But this year's maybe his worst year. 
Yeah, this is maybe the worst, worst splits we've. Well, seen other than when he first came up, remember he was over for thirty or over thirty one, whatever he was. Yeah, to start yeah, his when career. he first came up. Yeah, when he first came up. Uh, but that that that's it. He's been just awful, just awful. We've got some sound from now. A couple of things before the game, Joe Espada was asked about. Yeah, no, no, like April and May were his last year. 737, 749, and then every every month after that, except for September, he was either 800 or 900. His worst ball is played in his first few Oh, months. absolutely. That's and not- so now, <clears throat> if this is the beginning, if this is the beginning, then it's going to be interesting because you're going to need these nine-run games to win games based on the way the starting pitching has been at times. But yesterday... Your boy Spaghetti got there five innings, you know. Uh, Espada, before the game, talked about Alex Bregman, and he really liked what he saw. He said he was getting, uh, uh, looking at uh, better pitches. He was starting to get ahead in the count. Before the game. Before the game, he said this. And, you know, it actually, Randall, Randy McAvoy asked him about it. He said, yeah, listen, he's he's starting to look better. Then, then during the game, hmm. Now, he was batting behind... When you're batting behind John Singleton uh, in the order, and you're Alex Bregman in a contract year, it's not. That is really, really, and it should be motivation. But he said, no, that that didn't give him any extra motivation. Not really, but um, wherever uh, wherever they want me to hit, I'm going to hit. And um, I feel like over the course of 162, the cream always rises to the top. Well, that's him after the game, obviously. Yeah. Well, over the course of 162, it's one game. So he's got a long way to go. He's still hitting 200. So uh, I don't care if he's confident. Oh, man. Great. Oh, are you kidding? I think his problem is never going to be. I mean, it's just going to be confidence. I'd rather him be confident like that, like he's broken out of it. That's yeah. great. No, no, no. Absolutely. Um, it, uh, listen, so apparently we heard. Um, from Bob, was it Bob Nightingale that said that the, the two Astros, prominent Astros, went to somebody or so we're, we're complaining about Joe Espada somehow, Privately. some way. Privately complained. Privately complained. They, they didn't say to who. It could have been to their agent. It could have been to the front office. It could have been, who knows? We don't know to who. It was it was a terrible, actually, if it's, a, it's a terrible report. It, it just, all it does is put uh, throw shade over Joe Espada without a, a, any, any context whatsoever. Anyway... I was listening to uh, Joel and Jeremy yesterday, and they were talking about, yeah, um, you know, maybe it's, you know, guys, he's moving guys around in the order and whatnot and not, you know, and, and not communicating that to them. But do you remember when Joe Espada said, when, when he said, this is a difficult conversation that I had to have with, Craig, with, with, with Alex Bregman before the game about moving him down in the order when he batted him the, his sixth? Joe Espada has been transparent with the guys about... And who has he moved? He, uh, the only thing that he's done is drop Alex Bregman in the order. When, when you drop John Singleton or you dropped Jose Abreu, that is, you know what, you had to drop those guys. And, and he, he talked to Jose Abreu about batting eighth. And Jose Abreu was like, Jose Abreu's been so good about how bad he's been that he's just he took a demotion to Florida, a ball, just to get things worked out. Oh, well, it's, the, it's their spring training facility. Yeah. Anyway... That Joe Espada was not transparent with Alex Bregman is is off because he told us all. He said he had to have a difficult conversation with 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 Alex Bregman. Alex, none of these guys can complain about Joe Espada with the way that they've played, with the way that they've hit, with anything that they've done. But you know, eventually it's going to roll downhill on him. Well, it absolutely yeah. is. But you know what? I, I, he made a pretty good. We got to also look at some pretty good decisions when he uh, uh, pinch hit Jake Myers for Trey Cabbage the other night. That was a big move. And it paid off because uh, because Jake came through with a big hit in that situation, and they go on to win the game. He came up with a huge hit, and then they it started to. It looks like this team is starting to have that carnival thing again. They're starting to come up. They're put, they're, the runs? they're putting hits together now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, now this has been against not not the strongest of teams. I don't care, but I'll take it. Yeah, yeah well, well, you got to walk before you run because we know that the pedigree of this team is very very good. Um, I don't think it's just going to, you know, I, I may not be like other people who think it's just going to start clicking and everything will be fine. I don't think it works that way when you get older, when you're the pitching, frankly, is a huge concern for me. You did get an Astros um, 
quality start, which is five innings and two runs from Eric Getty. Totally take no, that. Absolutely. That's not a problem at all. Uh, we'll take that from from Spencer Eric Getty. And if you can get that, what he and Renel Blanco are doing, we used to say this is great for a fifth starter if you could get that. Now it's like I'll take it from anybody, yeah. literally anybody. Uh, if Verlander gives me five and two, I'm I'm okay with it. Yeah. If uh, well, if, look, he, if, he only got five innings on it. That's not a quality start. Just a win. No, it's an Astros quality start. No, it's not an Astros quality yeah, it start. Is. No, a quality start is six innings and three runs. No, but less. it's an AQS. <laughs> <laughs> for 2024, it's an AQS. Well, it kind of is for 2024. Yeah. For 2024, it's an AQS. AQS, okay. It's not normal. I mean, normally we have good starters. AQS this plus? This year, I take an AQ, the AQS plus, <laughs> and you also have to have fewer walks than strikeouts, or even, even, okay. to have an AQS. Okay. So you have to have even even walks and strikeouts, like three and three, because sometime, you know, sometimes you're going to have Fromber like, you know, five and five, or five and four. Well, typically it's not what you like, and the whip number will be too high. That still could lead to an AQS. Why? You, why is Fromber catching it right now? Because I want. Then he give us a good to, outing last time. Yeah, and he was terrible the time before. It's all right. I don't. It's hey, not right now. I'll take 50-50. Okay. Not really? Yeah. You're going to end up losing. Do you know what Spencer Arigetti's record is right now? Spencer Arigetti is. I know what it is. One in four. Yeah, he got his first dub. Well, he got. You know what though? He here's Spencer Spencer Arigetti. After the, you 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 mentioned it, he actually looked pretty good. No, I, I actually think his stuff has been pretty good. And you know what? He just has an inning where he no, will now have they've trouble. got twenty nine games in thirty days, and you would think that they'd go to the six man rotation. <laughs> well, well, <laughs> is Hunter coming back? Well, Hunter looked. Do actually, we, are we sure Hunter no, 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 no. needs to we, make another start? We found a spot for Hunter. Long relief. Leave him there. Long relief. Oh, That's he's going to get for a, Hunter right now. He's getting a start. It was already said they're going to go to a six man rotation. Uh-huh. He's going to get another start. Congrats. Yeah, but. It's what you wanted. Six yeah, but Arcadi's coming back. That's oh, why. Uh, not, maybe he's not ready yet, but Hunter Brown he is ready. He's looking like he's going to get another start. Uh, he's not ready. Um, five innings, five hits, two earned runs, five strikeouts, two walks, an AQS plus. Here is Spencer Arigetti talking about, and you know what? How, it ain't easy going from AAA to the big leagues and, and all of a sudden starting out and being you know, a Hunter Brown or somebody great like that. Spencer Arigetti after the game. It just feels like the, the elephant's out of the room. I don't think I'm chasing anything now, and I think I can I can really, really focus on just getting better each week between starts and uh, and trying to keep give us give us a chance to win. Arigetti's got a real shot to to stick around with potentially this year, maybe next maybe for sure next year as one of the starters in the rotation. He's got pretty good stuff. He does a he does a good job along with Yiner of figuring out how he wants to mix up his pitches. Hits a little bit too much of the zone sometime when he gets in trouble, but usually it's like an, one of those inning flare ups. He's not; they don't really hit him hard throughout a game. No, that's not really other than one of the early starts he had. He's he might have been brought up too fast. He well, might. It might just maybe not even too fast. Just, maybe he's just learning. Yeah, he's just like, oh, yeah. these guys are better than AAA. Yeah, yeah, yeah. they are. Yeah. Uh, until you get to the well, the A's. You know what? This isn't a bad. It's not a horrible team. For as bad as the A's organization is, this is not a horrible team. So that's a quality win right there. I just want a home win. I just want wins, and I want them at home too. And it's the quest for the drive for five hundred is alive right. The drive now. for five hundred. The drive for five hundred. No. And uh, All right, you got the, it's a it's the eight and two drive right now. The what ten we do game, as right? soon as they hit one and zero. Yeah. Uh, on your 8 and 2 one, run. Yeah. 1 and 0. Oh. 1 and 0. Oh. I'll take it. Um as soon as they hit that 500, the drive for 5, we're going to do shots of Maestro. That's fine. Okay. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. 100%. If they hit the drive for 5, 100%. Well, I got Mallory's be- going to bring me some more products, so we'll we'll get some in here. Well, if we, she messes around and bring me the expensive bottle, oh, 100%. We'll do that one on the air. I don't care. Might do two. Might do three. You might talk about it at Maestro then. Oh, so this is just leading me in. I thought you just were getting excited about Maestro Do Bell. Oh, man. I feel cheated now. I feel like John didn't mean it. I'm taking him. I meant it. I'm taking him. I'm taking him.